anyways some quick notes about the video today there's not going to be any homework because i'm saving that for the syntax errors video um, second is at the end there are recommendations for two street musicians so no album recommendations for this one and um, in the video i use the word function interchangeably with the word live loop so anytime you hear me use the word function i actually mean live loop but they essentially mean the same thing so i hope it doesn't confuse things too much outside of that hope you guys find it useful okay everyone welcome to episode two of my sonic pi series today is the 21st of november and we're a month away from the release of my upcoming ep lovesick for a strong woman and i'm actually gonna up the frequency of these tutorials i know i said i'd put them out every saturday but um, i actually want to put out as many as possible before the release of the album so that when the album drops at least i'm hoping some of you will be able to uh, use the program enough to take some of the code and some of the music that I've made for the album and you know remix it yourself or use it for your own stuff or whatever the case is but that's my main objective with these tutorials really <clears throat> okay so what are we going to learn today now if you see my buffer I've got that basic disco beat lined up let me just uh, play it so you can hear it Okay, so what we're going to do today is um, I'm going to, for the initial part, I'm going to cover two concepts. One is the second rule of sleep, and the second is this idea about parameters. And, uh, and then after that, the majority of this tutorial, I'm going to devote to the concept of rings. And um, if you can understand it, or if if I'm able to explain it properly, it will open up a whole world of possibilities um, as we go along with this program. So I'm going to try really hard to explain it in this episode. And then after I've explained it, I'll show you exactly where we'll be applying it for future episodes. Um, but first, let me just cover this. Uh, first, let me just cover the these other two concepts. So one of them is the second rule of sleep. Now, if you remember, the first rule of sleep was uh, that if you're using any sleep value, you should make sure it is a multiple of 0.25. And the second rule of sleep is for any given function, like your backbeat here or thumpy over here, you have to make sure that the total sleep time of any given function is equal to either 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, or 64. Now, why? Should it add up to these numbers? It's because in musical terms, this is what you will be uh, for. In musical terms, you will be forming what is called a bar. And what that means is essentially, if you stick to this rule, whatever melodies, bass lines, or beats that you're making, all of them will fall in line with each other if you just maintain this one rule of. Uh, of the total sleep time adding up to 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Now, how that might look in terms of, let's say, thumpy, like already these two are following those the, the, the rule because here the total sleep time is 1, here the total sleep time is 2. But let's say we, we make it, uh, we want this to be 8 instead of, so we put like 8 of these kick drums here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so let's say we have like various values that follow the first rule of sleep, right? So let's say we have 0.75 here. So for here is 0.25 because this plus this is equal to two. Right? One plus one equal to two here. And so let's do 0.5. One. So these two are equal to two. Want to do the same here. So let's do 75 like this. This plus this equal to two, and this one, point five, and point five. So this is equal to two. So two, 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 and four into two is eight. So let's hear what it sounds like. Okay, 
So it sounds fine. Now, the second concept I want to talk to you about is this idea of parameters. Now, anything that you're using, whether it's a sample or later on you'll see we'll be using synths and even effects, all of these things have parameters. Now, what are parameters? Now, if you remember, when I went to the help section and I selected samples and I went to percussive sounds or any of this thing, there are all these, all this huge list of things out here. What is this? These are the parameters. And these parameters basically control aspects of each sample. So, and if you go into the help, you'll see that they actually explain every single parameter. Like the one we're going to use today is amp. The amplitude of the sound, typically a value between zero and one. High amplitudes may be used, but won't make the sound louder. They will just reduce the quality of all sounds currently being played due to compression. So that's, that's a bit much. But basically any amplitude for any, I mean, any parameter for any given sample is explained in this big list out here and we're not like if you want you can use like all of them but typically you will only be using a few and the one that you will always be using is amp and amp basically just controls the volume of the sample in question so in this case uh, it, by default it's one but we can make it say 0.5 if we wanted and but if we want to control the amplitude of this this sample here we have to specify the same thing separately so Let's say we want this one to be 0.5, this one to be 0.5, this one to be 0.5. We've got to paste it eight times, bloody, which is bugging. Yeah. But I'll show you. We're going to simplify this. So let's play this. Listen to it. Now, if you so wished, you could get like very nitty gritty about this and, you know, really sort of vary it and eight five here you don't have to stick to that rule of sleep and you can put any kind of values between like you can do that if you want you can do that. i don't care what you do you know just you can use any values when it comes to parameters i mean not any values when it comes to but like certain parameters you can use certain numbers but we'll get to that basically for volume you can use any kind of numbers but and you can get really sort of nitty-gritty but no one really does this so let's just go back to how we were and now one thing i didn't explain last time was this idea of iterations now what is an iteration so i said that in a given loop there is a set of instructions so here's the set of instructions in thumpy for instance so now for the first iteration that is when i hit run for the first iteration it'll run this set of instructions and then when it loops again it'll run the same set of instructions. But let's say if I'm in a live scenario and I'm playing something and then I change the set of instructions and then I hit run again. It's now slightly changed. Okay, I'm going to stop this. And so what that means is, is that for those initial iterations, it was performing this set of instructions, but then I changed one of the instructions. So then what it does is it finishes that set of instructions. And when it comes back, it sees a new set of instructions and it'll execute those set of instructions. So that is the new iteration, right? So every time it loops back, that is an iteration essentially. So you could technically, and the the most basic way you can change it is, uh, the most basic way you can manipulate it is by changing it yourself in a live scenario, like I just did. But you could have, the way you depending on what kind of instructions you're giving it, you could have a different iteration every time it uh, loops back, essentially. So this is when we use the concept of rings, okay? Now, this is that big concept I told you that's going to open up a lot of um, usability for this program. Um, so here we've got eight samples of a kick drum, BD House, with the same amplitude. And having to repeat it like this eight times is just a cumbersome process. So there must be a way of simplifying this code, right? And there is, I can make this into two lines. And I'm just going to show it to you first, and then I'm going to explain to you, okay? So first, we're just going to listen to the beat. Mm -hmm. 
now i'm going to do this by making what is called a ring okay so let me just make the ring this is how the ring will look so it's just i will just be listing all these sleep times in this ring so 1.25 minutes 25 minutes 1.5 Seven five two five, and just uh, so that you know, this thing about the second rule of sleep, you know, everything adding up to eight, sixteen, all this is the most kind of accounting part of this process that is there in the sense that it's so bugging. But once you do it once, it's like you don't have to worry about it. And after that, after that, you can have fun with the beats and all that. Okay, so let's just listen to this. It's the same beat, okay? But now it's just two lines. It's so simple. So what have I done here exactly? Now to explain this, the first thing I want to show you is a Disney sing-along video. Now, for those of you who remember these types of videos will know these are the OG lyric videos, okay? So we're just gonna watch a little bit of this bare necessities and I there is a reason for this, okay? I'm showing you this for a reason, so. Let's just watch it for a bit. All you gotta do is look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your stress. I mean the bare necessities are mother nature's recipes. Okay, so why am I making you watch this sing-along video? It's because of this little Mickey Mouse thing that's bouncing along. The line one two three bouncing along that okay so now what i want you to understand about these rings okay so before we go into it i'm just gonna now literally you i have you can make a ring with anything okay so i'm gonna comment this out now commenting out basically means i want to keep the set of instructions but i don't want sonic pi to look at them okay so that's basically how you do that is you select what you want and you go alt question mark okay so now my set of instructions are there now i'm going to show you how this works okay so i'm just going to say sample and then i'm going to create a ring of samples so i'm going to create bd house i'm going to use the miscellaneous co and then we'll use one of this the snare dub okay so now we have three a ring of three samples. This is a list. Now, actually in computing terms, this is what is referred to as an array, but I'm just gonna call it a list because all these terms, they just tend to confuse things a bit for uh, teaching purposes. So this is a list of samples. So I've, I've got a sample and I've got a ring of samples. Now, when you create any list like this, depending on how you sequence it. So in this list, this BD house has the index number of zero, okay? This one has the index number of one, and this one has the index number of two. And similarly, if I had more, it would have three, four, five, whatever. So if I wanted to select BD house from this list, I would say ring blah, 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 open square bracket, zero, close square bracket. And then it should play BD house if I run it. Yes, it does. So that is because the index number for this fellow is zero. Now, if I hit one if i made it one it should sample the crow so let's run that yes it samples the crow and if i do two it should sample the snare drum now what happens when i hit three because there is no third thing right what happens oh it samples so this is what the thing it's called a ring for a reason it'll just circle back once it goes to three four it'll circle back so if i hit for if I chose any number for 156, it should select the one that would correspond to that, which is in this case BD house. So 157 would have been the crow. Okay, fine. So basically you have to understand this is zero, one, two. Okay. So now let's see how this works with this fellow that's there called tick. Okay. Now, why did I make you watch this bare necessities video? I'm gonna tell you. So now I said if we put zero in the bracket, okay, 
it would select the first value in this list of values in the ring, right? It would just be 0.75. So if I executed this, BD is playing, but it's only got, it's a playing at a time of 0.75, which is going at that time. So now imagine I put a variable and now this is where we're going to get into a bit of like algebra, okay? Or uh, algebra, if you will. Um, we're going to, instead of putting a number in there, I'm going to put in a x, okay? Now in algebra, you're typically, you know, find the value of x, right? But instead of x, I'm going to call it Mickey, okay? And of course, in the interest of, you know, gender balance, if you want, you call it Minnie because, you know, Minnie and Mickey Mouse, they've got the same head shape, really. Um, so if, and before I start, because I want to start with zero, right? So let's start Mickey as zero. Okay, so I've told Sonic Pi that please make Mickey zero before you start running all these loops. If I don't, if I don't specify this and I just run it, I get a syntax error because he's asking, what is Mickey essentially? I don't know what Mickey is. So I got to tell Sonic Pi that Mickey is zero. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more instruction. I'm going to say Mickey equals Mickey plus one. Okay. So what is going to happen is I said Mickey starts off as zero. And when it comes to this function, Mickey is zero. And after it has selected this one in the list, I say Mickey equals Mickey plus one. So zero plus one. So for the next iteration, Mickey has become one. So then technically it should select this one, right? And then after that, it'll say Mickey equals one plus one. So it becomes two. So the next iteration is two. So it'll go just like how that Mickey Mouse head is sort of bouncing from one thing in the in the song to the next, just like that by just incrementing Mickey by one. So let's listen to what this sounds like. So it's the same beat. That's essentially the point. But this is not how I had written it, right? This is, I had written it as this thing, this list, this ring dot tick, because the way Sonic Pi, so, the guy that built Sonic Pi, by the way, if you don't know this, the guy that it's the Sonic Pi is built just by one person. His name is Sam Aaron. And in fact, he has a gig today. So I would say go to his Instagram, follow him and just like check out some of the stuff he does because he's performing live today online. Um, so what he has built is in uh, like uh, as part of the program, he's created this thing called Tick, which basically does this function of a variable like Mickey incrementing by one on each iteration of the loop. So every time you call tick, so when you call tick the first time, it starts off as zero. And then every time you call it again, it will increment by one. So that is what is happening here. Okay, so that is what, so just, just as I explained that thing about Mickey, this is what is happening with the tick. But there is one more point you have to understand about this. And now I'm just going to show you how this works. Okay, so I'm going to create one more ring here with BD house and that miscellaneous crow. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say ring dot tick. Okay, now let's listen. To this okay let's see what's so technically it should go it should alternate between the kick and the crow and should follow these times right so let's listen what's going on where is my crow i want to hear my crow but my crow is not there okay so this is the thing you have to understand is that every time you call tick it increments by one which means, and I really need you to understand this, okay? <laughs> which means that the first time I call it here, it is zero, okay? 
But then the next time I call it here, since I'm calling tick again, it increments by one. So here it is actually one. So it's actually going to the second value, 1.25. It doesn't go to this first value. So then how do I keep everything in line? Like how do I make sure that it's picking the first thing in the list from here and the first thing in the list from here? So therefore you have this thing called look, okay? And I know this is gonna, this is now seeming a bit cumbersome, but bear with me, I promise you. So the way I tend to write my functions is I will call tick right at the top, okay? And then to make sure that for every list that I have that it's following the first one for each iteration and for the next iteration is going to the second one, I say look. So when I call tick here, it starts as zero. So when I say look, it is look, it's looking at this tick variable and the number is still zero. And here it is still zero. But if I call tick here, it'll increment by one. But I don't want it to increment. I just want it to look. So it's looking, tick is zero here. So here it is the first one, zero, first one, the next one here. Then here I call tick again, it increments by one. So it becomes one. So here it goes to the second one. So now if I play it, it should alternate properly. And if you notice the beat, it's sounding like a disco beat suddenly. Like it's going because I have made these the way of it's the way I've arranged these values, honestly. Because like say if I put 0.25 here and then the 1.25 here, then it should at least have some nice funkiness to it. Okay. But that if you didn't understand what just happened there, don't worry about it for now. But what I do want to show you is um, something that I do, why some of the stuff, wh one of the reasons I love Sonic Pi so much actually is, so because I've got these list of values here, okay, going, if I play it. Now say I want to run it at half time, okay? When I say half time, I mean I want to slow it by half. I actually have to multiply it by two. So I can multiply this ring by two, which means that depending on which number it is in the list, it will multiply that by two and it will slow down the rhythm by half. So just let's just listen to this. Or let's say I divide by two. What does that sound like? Then it should speed it up. It's that easy to kind of speed up and slow down your rhythm and still keep to those first two rules of sleep. And I do this in live performances all the time in the sense that I will have a beat running at half time for the verses. And then when the chorus kicks in, I jack up the rhythm by just dividing by two, you know, and it's that easy. It's just a mathematical function. Okay. Now, before I finish this tutorial, now that is the main thing about rings. Okay. So if you have not understood anything that I've explained about rings up till now, you please, you know, get in touch or like play with it. See if you kind of do understand what I've explained to you. And if you, ha if you feel like you haven't, then yeah, please get in touch. But before I finish this, I'm going to explain one last thing. And that is, we're going to create one more live loop. And we're going to call it tickers. Okay? Because we're going to introduce uh, a hi-hat. Now, if you remember, there was that uh, cat drama. I had watched not this fellow. Yes, this guy. Now, if you remember in this video, okay, here we have this was the kick drum, this was the snare drum. Now, this is what is called a hi hat. Okay. Now, hi hats are a lot of fun to play with, but I actually avoid hi hats a lot. But they are, there's a lot of rhythm. There's a lot of sort of um, danceability that's there 
uh, with hi hats, let's say. So I'm just going to create, and a hi hat is essentially a symbol. So I'm going to sample a hi hat. Um, and in Sonic Pi, it is essentially like one of these drum symbols. So let's do the drum symbol closed. I think that's it. And then we do a sleep of 0.25, which is really tiny. But remember that first rule of sleep, right? We're going to do four times. I mean, the second rule of sleep. We're going to do four times do and end. And remember, this is. I'll be going over this in syntax uh, errors, but for every do, there has to be an end. So if you miss out an end like this, and you try to run stuff, you'll get a syntax error. So just make sure you've got every end to every do. And let's listen to what this sounds like. Oh wait, sorry, I've got this at half time. Let's just. Okay, now why am I showing you this? Because, also, if you're curious about why I did four times do, because technically I could run this without, it would be the same. The reason I do the four times do is because um, if the iteration, if the sleep time for uh, one iteration is too low, like 0.25, Sonic Pi might start giving you timing errors. So, that's what I'm trying to avoid here by saying four times two is that I want to keep a set of instructions. I keep the sleep time for a single iteration, like one instead of 0.25. Anyway, um, what I wanted to show you here was another way of using rings and another parameter also. Like, So we've got amp one, that's one parameter. Then there is a parameter called rate. Spelling rate, okay? So now default parameter for rate is one now what does rate mean it just means how fast you're playing the sample so in this case the sample is played at normal speed but if i wanted to play it at double the speed i could make it two if i wanted to play it at four times the speed i could make it four i could even do like 3.335 times the speed and what that sounds like okay but what is so amazing about rate is, and this I'll come to again once I get into loops and all, is if you do a minus one, it'll reverse the sample. Which if you've ever used a, a, a digital audio workstation or DAWs, like I don't know about Ableton, but in Pro Tools, reversing samples is such a cumbersome <laughs> task. But here you just have to say minus one and it reverses it for you, which is... To me, a very magical thing, okay? But what I really wanted to show you here with rate is, is another thing that you can do with sleep times, okay? I mean, with the sleep times, with the rings, okay? So I can specify a ring, a list of sort of uh, values, let's say one, zero, zero. And then instead of saying tick, I can say dot choose, and this is what is called randomization. So I can actually make Sonic Pi just choose a value here. So let's say, okay, this is one out of three, but let's say one out of two times, it'll be on, the amp will be one, and one out of two times will be zero. So it's like switching it on and off randomly. So now it's sounding like really funky, and I can even do that here. I don't even have to do, pick out like I can do it here and then we'll get another funky and what really is stabilizing it is the backbeat in this case but it's just choosing it very randomly and here in this case I'm not following that second rule of sleep I'm just following the first but and that's what makes it work and here it is following the rule of sleep, but it's just switching it on and off very randomly. So this is another very cool thing about rings is that you can just create a list of values and you can let Sonic Pi choose the stuff for you. It's that easy, okay? Okay, now the last thing I wanted to show you is what we're gonna be using these rings for, okay? so. Just briefly, we're going to be using it for chords. We're going to be using it for melodies. So here's an example from a song I've got coming up where I'm using 
rings. Okay, so let's just paste it here. Comment these out. Remember, commenting out is Alt question mark. Okay, now I've got now just like we have sample i'll be going over this in upcoming uh, tutorials but there's something called synth so i'm calling a synth calling beep and here i want to play three chords okay now for those of you who don't know what this is basically a f and e in musical terms so i want a minor that goes down to f major seven that play sorry a minor that plays for four beats then f major seven that plays for four beats and then e minor seven that plays for eight beats this is a chord progression and this follows that second rule of sleep four plus four is eight eight plus eight is sixteen so let's listen to what this sounds like and see i've got this tick at the top and i've got look 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 everywhere and for me this is standard across whether I'm making melodies, whether I'm making bass lines, like for instance, let's look at a, a bass line. Okay. This one was from, for those of you who have heard my track, um, I'm planning a jugalbandi between your thighs. This was the main melody or the main hook from the track. And so that's the main hook. and. Like it starts off at this pitch, but then it goes down an octave and it becomes. Now, if you see, it says knit over here instead of ring. So this we will get into much later. And I know this looks a bit cumbersome, but believe me, this is all very easy to understand once we get to it. But knit is just like another form of a ring. It's just like a... Uh, when you're using, I, I generally use knit stuff for like melodies and uh, more complex melodies and more complex bass lines, you know. But we'll be going with the simple stuff as well. So, all this I'll be covering in future episodes. So, don't worry about that. And uh, the last thing I'd like to leave you with is a music recommendation, but it's not going to be an album this time. It's going to be Pipe. What is his name? Pipe Guy. Okay. I want you to watch Pipe Guy. Now, some of you have definitely seen this video because it's such a popular look. 62 million. You've probably already seen. But I want you to get used to this idea of minimalism. Okay. Just listen to this guy. So, I actually, no, I'm not going to make you. You listen to this guy on your own. But the point is that if you think about um, tabla players, Ghatam players, Mridangam players, or even this guy, what's his name? Dario, Dario Rossi. Yeah, this guy also. Pipe guy and Dario Rossi. These two are street musicians. These guys make... Look at this. So, what I'm... What I'm trying to get across with this Dario Rossi and Pipe guy as well is that if you look at or even any tabla play or ghatam players that they are using two hands to make all their rhythms and the sonic pi equivalent for that would just be two functions you know two functions running so but they get so much variation with just two hands so like Technically, you could run, you could be running like n number of functions, like a hundred different rhythm functions, but really all you need is two, you know, to get the maximum rhythm you need to dance, is my point. So you have to kind of limit um, the number of loops you're using when it comes to rhythms. Like if you're going beyond four, in my opinion, it's going to be too much. But between two and four is a good number of loops to have so if you're making a, some kind of uh, rhythm section just limit yourself to four loops and just listen to street musicians and even this pipe guy because pipe guy is so awesome because um like just what he's built the base this this pipe thing it's like all bass notes so i would highly recommend and just kind of get into the headspace of just minimalism essentially is what i'm trying to get across um so i hope you guys found this tutorial useful and 
as always, I will see you in the next one.